Hiya guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I am showing you the deck list and I'm going off to Sheffield Regionals with. So, basically this deck is, well as you can see by the title and on the screen right now, it's Ultra Necrozma Malamar. Uh, this deck is brilliant. I've actually got it right here. And it hits hard, it's quick, it's, it's just not a lot going good for this deck. And that's why I'm planning to take this to Sheffield Regionals, which well, today is the 9th of this recording. And hopefully the figure goes up on the 9th as well. <laughs> so it's one week today. I am dead excited. Hopefully I get far. So... Let's just start with things off. We've got our main attackers. I don't know why I've still got this for wanted. Because I've got four of them now. So, But anyway. Ultra Necrozma. 190 HP. Which is brilliant. It's, it's better than 180. Most GXs. Hits for 180. And most GXs that has 180 HP. Gets not one hit KO'd very easily. But Pokemon 190, that 10 damage difference, the difference, could change everything. You'll be surviving with just 10 HP. You know, you can maybe get a heal off or something. Because we're not having any healing in this deck, apart from Lele, if I choose to, because I am playing Psychic Energy. Other than that, you're surviving a hit. And you're hitting hard back. That's why Buzzroll, things like Buzzroll, things like Necrozma, thing like Dustmane, Necrozma, things like that. What Pokemon 190 are doing so much better in the format than others. But anyway, let's go on to its main attack, the attack we will be using for a Psychic Metal, Phantom Geyser. 20 damage plus 80 damage for each psychic card you discard from this Pokemon. So essentially two psychics, you're doing 180. So like I said, you're getting a one hit KO on most things. Bulu, Tapu Lele, just any other GX that got 180. Add on choice band, you're doing 210. So you get Soul Rock. Very easily, and you get other 190 Pokemon. And then, as you'll see, Beast Energy, extra 30 damage, that's 240. No knocking that guard far. But it's just still running around, but it will not be running around as much anymore. It has gone down a lot. But mostly you want, you just want two energies and either a beast energy or a choice band. Because then you're getting your two, two turns, you're getting your chaos on Sora, you're getting your chaos on Buzzworld, Lapras, you name it, Ho-Ho. Just all of those good stuff. And then it's GX attack. Same amount of energy. If both yours and your opponent five cards, um, add up to six. So let's say your opponent's got four five cards remaining, I've got two five cards remaining, I could use this GX attack. It just spreads six damage across the board. It's a handy late game GX. If your opponent has a 60 HP Pokemon left on the bench and you've got one prize card remaining and your opponent's got five, use this GX. You get that last prize card no matter what, but you're hardly ever going to use this GX attack. So let's get on to the partners of the deck. The main partner, the one that makes it work, is Malamar. And we play Malamar for its ability, Psychic Recharge. Once during your turn, you may attach a Psychic Energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So essentially, with this deck, how it works is you get your Psychic Energies, you put it in a discard, and then attach with Malamar. And I'm playing a 
444 line on Malamos, and in case, just so I have that consistency. Because like I said, you want two psychic energies. Sometimes you might want three. So you want at least three Malamos on your bench. And if one of them, one of them prize, you will be struggling. So I play four just to make sure I got enough mana mass to power up Necrozma. Next we got Dawnwings Necrozma, playing two of those. Oh, I forgot to mention Ultra Necrozma, I'm playing two of those as well. Reason being is that, yeah, in case you're main attacker, but sometimes you might want to attack with Dawnwings Necrozma. It does hit me, no on Buzzwall. And it takes psychic like energy and it has an amazing GS attack. So let's get on down with it. So 180 HP, like I said, it'll get knocked out quite easily by most things. So HP is not that great. But we're playing it for invasion. Once you're in your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you can switch it with your active Pokemon. It's basically the Rush in Caldeo EX ability. So we all know how we played that. It's basically the same here. Flamestone. So essentially after we finish attacking the Ultra Necrozma, we put Dawn Wings on Necrozma in the front, use Psychic Recharge for a Malamar, get the energy back on, Floatstone, retreat, and attack again. And that's how this deck works. This is the core of the deck. And that's how it runs. It just so good. I get. I cannot stress enough how good this deck is, and it needs to be played more. I've been noticing a previous, previous tournaments, regionals, and that. that it just hardly gets played. Ever since Forbidden Light, like Madison's, that's still filled in with Boswell, Lycanroc, Sorox, all those type of decks. I think I only saw two, and that's about it two decks in the top 30 too. so it needs to be played more and I want, that's just what I'm hoping I get from this video that people see this and be like oh yeah I want to play that deck let's go for it so yeah anyway we do have other helpers in this deck let's get on with the main one the obvious one Tapu Lele Run the tag. Simple enough. And we're only playing one because of course bench space. We want mainly our Malamars, but Lele is here just to help us get our supporters. Especially for that one turn Lele. I am going for the one turn Lele route, not the Bridget. I find I just like the Lele route so much better. But personally, this deck can still work with Bridget. It's just down to your, this is just down to your choice. If you want to recreate this deck and you want to go Lele Bridget, go for it. It will still, this deck will still work with Bridget. It's just, I just like to play Lily over Bridget. It's just my personal, personal opinion. But if you want to play Bridget, you can do. It's just your choice. This it could either be a lady or budget, you get my point, I better shut up about it now. But essentially what Lily does is, if you play it on your first turn, you could draw up to 8 cards in your hand. So you've got 2 cards, you could draw for 6. If you've got an empty hand, you draw 8. And of course, we're discard a lot with this deck, so Lily, Lily, I think it's a better work than Bridget. But if you want to play Bridget, play Bridget, and I better shut up, because it's I do. Yeah, you get my point. Other helpers we got is Face Collide Mew. Face Collide Mew will help you hit that weakness on Buzzwall. Okay, it will copy your Ultra Necrozma's attack. It even copy the Dawnwing's attack if you've got the right energy count. So it does need the metal, it does need the psychics on it for it, you know, attack. But yeah, that's what it is because you with Mew, you're literally trading two prizes for one. 
So you, you knock his Pokemon out, you get two prize. And when he returns KO you, you only get him one prize. So you'll still be ahead. And that's like that's how he'd be using yeah. You just be be like, hey, you only take one prize, you wanna knock this out? Oh by the way, I can knock you out of this, so <laughs> And then last two supporters got one new non of Prison Star. It's for that full moon star for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Attach a psychic energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. So essentially it's if you struggle with Malamar, this is where Lunar can say be like, okay, make sure you look Malamar surprise, I'll come here, I get you up, buddy. I make sure you're powerful enough to take these KOs and then hopefully you get your mana miles from your boys. That's what the century is, is to help you in a pinch. And you can attack with this, but you're hardly ever gonna attack with this, so but it's attack for four psychic energy, training damage for each Pokemon attached to both active. I think you said oh no! I actually read that one. This attack does 20 damage for times the amount of energy attached to all Pokemon. Ooh. Now, now I've read that pop. I thought it was just both active. But now knowing that it says on all Pokemon, that actually is a brilliant attack. So if you can attack with this, go ahead. I might try it when in my matches. Anyway, last helper. Now I was in such a debate about putting this guy in, but all good for, and it's for that instruct ability. Once during your turn, you can draw cards until you have three in your hand. Now we're discarding a lot, so a lot of times we're going to have less than three cards in our hands, and we might not even have a supporter. So that's where all good can come in and be like, "Yeah, okay, I can still draw you cards," and then hopefully you get into this draw support. But the reason I'm in the debate is bench space. Like I said, you want three mana Mars, you want your Nocrosma, like Dawnwing's Nocrosma, and then you want your old ultimate called Nocrosma. That's at least one bench space left. And most likely you're going to have that bench space for Lele, for your turn one Lele or Bridget. So I was in a bit of a debate. Um. You probably not every match you probably need him, but there have been matches I had where I did need him. So I'm just in a bit of a debate because I'm thinking of adding. I haven't done this yet, but I'm thinking of adding Garantina promo just for those Green Ninja decks because Green Ninja is still like the break, not the GX. The break, or going into your break, it's still running around, it's still causing trouble in the meta game. So I just want to play Garantina promo over this, just for those pesky Greninjas, but then I'll be losing my dual support value. So it's, it's a debate. Just let me comment down below what you would do. Would you replace all of your uh, the promo Garatina, or would you keep all going? Let me know down in the comments. I do read them, so yeah, just let me know on that one. So let's get on to the supporters. Like I already said, Lele first turn, just so we get things rolling. But we're also playing four Sycamores. Discard your hand and draw seven cards. This is a Nice, easy way to discard all your psychic energies. So that's why we're playing four. It's just mainly discard energies. Make sure they're in our discard pile. You do end up my like, discarding important things, but I have played the one where you get those back easily. Then we're playing two ends because you turn one end is still good, but you don't want to be ending too much. But let's say you've got a load of psychic energies in your hand and you end up at N. You don't want to put that back in your deck. You want it in your discard. So that's why we're playing more Sycamores than N. 
Um, we're also playing three Cynthia's because we still need a good draw support and second more you might have enough psychic energies in your discard and be like, yeah, okay, I don't need a second one anymore. Let's go for Cynthia. Cynthia is still going to be better than any in this deck, in my personal opinion. But if you want to run three ends and two Cynthia, that's fine. And then last but not least, three Guzmas. I before I added all go into this deck, I did play four Guzmas, and that worked out. Brilliantly, so I might even discard all go for fourth Guzma. But we all know what Guzma does. Switch your opponent's Pokemon and bench Pokemon with their active, and if you do, switch your active for your bench. So it's it's a good way, let's say they feel blow your float stone off the um, Dorings and the Cross, and it's still inactive. Where you charge up no cross um ultimate con no plasma, and you just play Guzma and you get switched one then. And then invasion back, and hopefully later on you get another float stone. Because then you just see in a min with all my items. I'm playing quite a few. So, item cards. Let's start off with the three field blowers. Yes, I'm playing three field blowers because the biggest weakness of this deck is Garbodor. The ability locking Gar Garbodor. I can never say its ability's name. Of, um, top toxin, the, 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 yeah, I, I, can't, I cannot say its ability's name, but essentially it shuts off, if it has a tool card attached to it, it shuts off all other abilities, and this is a ability heavy deck. <laughs> so I'm playing three field, field blowers just to eliminate that, and it actually. Did came in handy. I have played one Gold Dog deck so far, and I did manage to win thanks to having three field blowers. Because near the end, he shut off my ability again after I field blowed him twice. And I was like, I, I need to get my abilities back to win. And luckily enough, I still had one field blower left. And I managed to hit it from the second more, and I was like, yes, get in there, I won. So, field blowers, field blowers is great. We're playing four mysterious treasures, uh, treasures and four ultra balls. Discard your psychics, get your mana mars. That's it. Or your Lele's, or your Nukasva. Basically, every Pokemon in this deck, apart from all you could get. Well, you could get all the Guru Ultra Ball, but not with Mysterious Treasure. Because Mysterious Treasure is discard one card and get a Psychic or Dragon. And goes all the Guru, it's a colorless. But you can still get him with Ultra Ball. But, yeah. You mainly want to get your Manomars, your Nukasvas, your Dormings, and your Lele's. But we're playing for just for that consistency because you want to hit it all the time and you want to discard your psychic energy as quick as you can. Next up, two professor's letters. Just get it helps you get your metal because you see in a minute I'm not playing much metal. So it's just there to help you get your metals, it's there to help you get your psychic energy just in case you got let's say you got Ultra Ball in hand, you could play Professor's Letter, grab two psychics, and then you could play Ultra Ball. Simple enough, and it helps you get your metal, so like I said, just as well. We're playing one super well, just in case we do end up discarding our metals or any important Pokemon, we could just get it back. But we're only playing one because of deck space, really. And then two choice bands just for that extra 30 damage on GXs and EXs. But we're only playing two because of space. I would love to add a third, but. Hmm. I mean, this deck has filled up enough already. And then we're playing four float stones because, like I said, having a float stone on your dormies and craftsmen is so important for this deck. And most people are now opting to free field blowers just because of Garbodo. And quite a few decks are now being quite ability heavy. So. 
playing four just so I I know I will have a field blower every game. And then energy count, eight psychics, two metals, and one beast energy. Beast energy, brilliant. Because you've got Ultra Necros, which is a Ultra Beast, you've got your Dawn Moon Necros, which is an Ultra Beast. And they're the two main ones you're going to attack with. So Beast Energy will help you do that extra damage, that 30 damage. And it could be your Metal Energy, it could be your Psychic Energy. So that's why, yeah, Beast Energy is probably the best Prison Star that came out of the Green and Light, other than Deancey. And two Metal Energies, because we're playing Beast Energy. So essentially we do have three Metal Energies, and then eight Psychics, because of course we want to discard quite a few for Mario Mart. And that's the deck. If you like this deck and want to rebuild it yourself, please let me know down in the comments. And like this video if you have enjoyed. And hopefully, if you subscribe, you will see me play this deck in a couple of matches like it did with the Bulu. But until then, go and enjoy your day and just have a nice life. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, my friends.